Hello, welcome or welcome back to my Croft Kitchen series. For episode 7, I'm going to be making a pudding using three staple store cupboard ingredients tea, toast, and marmalade. Keep watching to find out more. Today's dish consists of tea, toast, and marmalade. The idea for this dish comes from Sunday nights growing up as a child. We as a family would have tea, toast and marmalade for supper and at times during power cuts we would toast the bread on the open peat fire. The bread I'm using today is stag loaf, marmalade which I bought from the Good Food Boutique and loose tea from the Hebridean Tea Store. The loose tea has a slight smoky peatiness to it which is going to be ideal for this dish so I'm trying to encapsulate all these memories into this dish. So, we're going to start the dish by making our tea. So, I'm going to take the loose tea. Already, the aroma from opening the packet is pretty phenomenal. So, I'm going to add two teaspoons of the loose tea and 110 milliliters of boiling water. And I'm going to leave that to infuse and completely cool before straining it, ready for the next part of the dish. Now the next thing we're going to do is preheat our oven to 180 degrees Celsius and now we're going to get onto our toast. We've got a lovely stag loaf here. Absolutely stunning. There's no other bread like it, I believe, in the world. We've got the lovely crust on the top and the crust on the bottom. You can get it sliced as well, but I find, in fact, it's an accidental treat, I suppose, if you want to call it that, where when we're cutting the bread, even though you're trying to get the slices as thin as possible, the knife just accidentally cuts it that bit more chunkier. This has got a brilliant knife here. And I believe that when it comes to toasting the bread, that if you have to wedge it into the toaster, then that's the right thickness for the toast. So for the dish, we're gonna need 160 grams of bread. Ready for toasting. So that's our toast, lovely and golden. I'm just gonna prop it up. You can see the lovely black bits on there as well. To be honest, the more color on it, the better the finished dish. I'm gonna prop it up just to dry slightly and cool just before we blitz it. Our next stage, we'll need four little ramekins, about 180 milliliters. I've um, brushed some butter in there, plenty of it, and I've cut a little paper disc out which I'm just going to pop into there, which will help release the pudding after it's been cooked. If you didn't have moulds, you could use maybe um, cups or uh, even a, a, a tray. You can bake it in the tray itself, but we're going a bit restauranty with this, so we're going to have individual moulds. Our tea, which has now been cooled and infused, I'm going to strain. Plenty of flavour in there. Give it last drop out. Good. Set that aside. And now to blitz our toast. So I'm just going to blitz our toast now. Just break it up into pieces. Suppose you look at this dish as a take on the old fashioned Queen of Puddings or a more modern take now we call King of Puddings. We've got the, the set custard with the breadcrumbs, but we're just taking it to another level. Lid on. Have it. Perfectly blitzed. 
And now let's just pull the dish together. So for our pudding mix, in the bowl I've got 160 grams of butter, 110 grams of soft brown sugar. Now the butter's at room temperature and we just want to start creaming it. Now they say not to over cream butter and sugar, but I think we should go the other direction with it. I think I believe that we'd get a better result in the finished pudding by just giving that a little bit extra. There we have it. Lovely, almost pale colour. To that, we're going to add our eggs. Now, seeing we've got this far for the butter and sugar, I want to crack the eggs into a dish first, just in case we have a rogue egg. I can catch it at this point in time. One egg at a time. Now to this kind of stage we think, oh my goodness, it looks scrambled, it looks terrible, it'll come together once we come up with the other additions we have going in. Next we're going to take our flour, 35 grams of self-raising flour. Together. And now for our breadcrumbs, our lovely stag loaf. The, the, the toastiness is, is still coming off it, it's, it's just lovely. Um, and it's a fantastic addition for this pudding. Um, like I said previous, there's no other bread like it. It's got substance, it's got the crusts, it's got um, just everything about it. The flavour, and that's what makes it unique. In with the crumbs. Followed by our 110 millilitres of tea. Again, I'm just giving that light peatiness to it. Like we would have when we used to toast the bread on the open fire during the times of power cuts. So, there we have it. It's come together nicely. And now, to fill our basins. Now, for the marmalade aspect of this, I've added a slight grown-up touch to it by adding one of my favourite whiskies. Uh, in the bowl, I've got four tablespoons of marmalade to a small dash of uh, the whiskey. So I'm going to add this to the moulds. I'm thinking about one tablespoon per each mould. Aroma of whiskey. You can see the nice big chunks of Rind. Right. Now followed by a batter. Oops. Just wanna 
else because away from the rim. Divide and make sure it evenly between the four dishes. All evenly filled. And now I'm just going to take some little square pieces of paper just to protect the puddings. Into a deep tray with about an inch of water on the bottom. And that is just going to help protect the puddings while they're in the oven. More protection with a sheet to clean from. And a sheet of foil. So that is now nice and tight, ready for the oven, and that's going to take about 30 minutes in the oven. So these are the puddings now out of the oven. Until remove the tin foil. Along with the clean foam. Careful as it hot. I'll put them down onto the towel to protect the worktop. So to plate up our pudding, it's very carefully, it's still quite hot. Remove the paper. and add a generous pouring of cream. There you have it, my take on toast, tea and marmalade. Enjoy.